What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, November 27th, 2022. It's about 12.25 p.m. California time here along the West Coast. And taking a look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here on the globe. A 4.9, the latest quake here at about 60 kilometers deep into extreme western China. The latest quake there on the globe. All right, now looking at uh, the flat scale model Earth here, we have seen a little shift in activity over the 12 hour time span since uh, last night's update. Seems like more of a uh, uh, earthquake presence here along the Java Trench, Indonesia area and throughout portions here of the Tonga region. Also notice over here south along the South America region and also the Southern Pacific all showing activity overnight. Uh, seems to have had a little shift here in the earthquake activity, but uh, can't discredit all the newer movement happening uh, further up north in certain areas. So let's go ahead and start with this activity up here into the Aleutian Trench of 4.8 coming in just about half an hour or so ago, 57 kilometers deep. Uh, still watching this zone right here for some potential movement. Uh, and that means uh, something above, at least above 5.0. This area really hasn't seen too much activity here. Uh, we can go back to the last 30 days and check out 4.5 and above. And you can kind of look at the model here and kind of pinpoint areas that maybe haven't seen any sufficient movement. And this area around the Aleutian Trench, this little section right here, is uh, looking prime for some activity. Also looks like maybe a potential region here, but uh, just because we do have some fours and whatnot doesn't mean that's it, you know, that, that we won't see something uh, different, but, uh, or something bigger, I should say. I heard something moving over here. Shouldn't be nothing moving right next to me. I, mean, I got a ghost in here. Uh, also the Kuro Kamachaka Trench is a region. Well, they have seen some fours and fives uh, over the last couple days. But uh, over the last few months and uh, um, year or so, it's been absent of any further larger scale activity. And I know this region is primed for some potential movement. Just, just got to build up enough stress here to produce a big earthquake. But I think there is. All right. Uh, movement up through Anchorage and through the Cook Inlet area. All shown some activity today. Doesn't look like any specific regions, just kind of a broad area of earthquakes up through the region of Alaska. A little bit of a cluster of quakes here into the, uh, looks like the Robinson Mountains area uh, off of the, um, uh, looks like a fold and thrust belt area. This is another um, area that uh, can see some large earthquakes, pretty dynamic plate boundaries there. Uh, Pacific Northwest. One earthquake into northern Washington, Loomis, Washington, a 1.1. Uh, the rest of the states here, or at least the uh, northwest, looks pretty quiet over here around the Montana region, a 2.2 coming in. Uh, earlier this morning, it looks like at about 9 kilometers deep. Nothing showing up here on Yellowstone, but I want to be sure of that, so I'm going to go ahead and verify that data. And uh, these guys are still a little slow, but hey, they're up and running, right? That's the main thing. I kind of like this site. So earthquake activity. Not for sure what's happening up here at Mammoth Vault. Uh, these don't look like earthquakes. They look like something else. Kind of hard to uh, uh, decipher what those are because they're really not showing up on any of these other seismograph stations here around the region. So it could be something local. Uh, that could be interfering with that size uh, that seismograph station but far as earthquake activity goes yellowstone has really calmed down over the last couple days here far as that earthquake swarm goes we've had a pretty ongoing earthquake event there at yellowstone for the past couple months it seems but uh, things are starting to mellow out uh, this activity the darker thicker lines are not magma movement but uh, wind events, uh, I'm pretty certain that there's a pretty good system up there creating that environmental noise across the majority of the stations there uh, around Yellowstone National Park. All right, uh, West Coast, what do we got here? I believe this is from yesterday, that 2.5 kicked off there in the southern end of the Cascadia. Since then, nothing really um, popping up, not a whole lot of further activity. 
Northern California, very quiet, uh, very quiet. Look at that Bay Area not showing anything. Uh, a little bit of movement here around the Sierra Nevada Mountains, 1.6 it looks like. Long Valley Super Volcano, Mammoth Lakes area, just a couple small, very small microquakes. And the Ridgecrest area, um, some movement uh, overnight looks like in this morning, but the majority of this that you see here on the map is from yesterday. So things kind of mellowed out here across the west coast overnight. Uh, some activity down in Southern California, extreme Southern California, near the uh, San Jacinto Mountains. Off of the fault systems as well here. Nothing major going on around the Brawley Seismic Zone or the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. For now, that's all quiet. Uh, the rest of the Intermountain West region and areas east of the Rockies look uh, pretty quiet as well. Look at that. Uh, Oklahoma did have, uh, looks like a couple earthquakes after midnight. A couple twos and some ones in this little area here. Uh, it looks like the Prairie Valley area. Let me see what we got for the last 30 days of movement. Uh, I believe that, yeah, that's our swarm area. About 84 earthquakes happening there over the last 30 days in this region outside of um, Minco. Here uh, off of 81. And uh, it's been relatively quiet here over the past couple days, but it looks like things may be picking back up. Uh, but hard to say exactly. Um, satellite view. Now... There is some um, older pumping operations out here, I believe. I know there's a lot of windmills as well. Notice these uh, wind turbines out there on the uh, turbines on the uh, turbines on the um, the land here. You can see the shadow actually as well. Pretty cool. Those are really neat to look at uh, when you're traveling out there. But uh, far as you know, these oil pumping operations out here, there, it looks like there may be still some out here in the region, um, but I can't say there isn't any um, fault systems out here as well. I believe there's a couple different fault systems. U.S. Hazard Map does have this area of Oklahoma in the um, seismically active zone far as faults go. So uh, it does does have some, uh, some fault systems out there in that area of Oklahoma, just not mentioned there on the map. All right, let's get rid of that. Head back out of here. Eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there in the earthquake department. Over here around Puerto Rico area. Got a couple earthquakes after midnight, but the majority of this activity as well from overnight. Uh, had a 3.5 and 3, or uh, yesterday, I should say. We did have that 3.4 and 3.5 overnight, but uh, that's about it for today's time frame. Um, off the coast here of Nicaragua, uh, just off the coast here, looks like a 5.0 coming in just after midnight, 53 kilometers deep. Now this area has seen a little bit of movement here and I don't believe USGS is showing all of it. Um, looks like there's been a couple twos and some threes further south here around the Costa Rica area overnight with a uh, cluster of swarming starting to venture down into the Peru Chile Trench there off the coast of Ecuador. And we're not seeing that listed up here on the map. Um, see what these magnitudes are here. Looks like there's a, at least a 4.1, two 4.1s here and a 3.9. So um, two of these earthquakes should at least be showing up there on the USGS map. So that there's a little absence here of quakes, but they're there um, on the EMSC model. So that gives a good indication here of this southward um, pressure transfer here down along the Peru Chile Trench yesterday and overnight. We did see quite a few fours up and down the Peru Chile Trench here, some of it deep, somewhat shallow. Uh, getting in on some activity down here off the coast of Chile as well. Some very shallow movement, but uh, last 30 days of activity uh, does show some heightened regions. Uh, no, we didn't really see any super large-scale activity. We did see a 6.2 here uh, off the coast of Chile and quite a few fives in there as well, but um, nothing large. That's a six-pointer for this area. is actually pretty common, but uh, certain areas around here that have seen some deeper movement that may be um, up for the uh, larger magnitudes here pretty soon. 
we did see a pretty good cluster of fours and fives here in this area of the Peru Chile Trench uh, just off the coast of Peru in a pretty interesting fashion here you can kind of see that linear motion uh, from the subduction zone level down dip here these deeper earthquakes as you head in this fashion here indicating some deeper movements uh, deeper movement quakes not super deep but they are um, down there below this little before this uh, subduction zone and really surprised here uh, that we didn't see a much larger quake when we see this type of setup uh, again, I think we only seen a 5.8 uh, in that mix of mini fours and mini fives. But uh, man, it's kind of interesting to watch, see that happen. We don't really see that too often, but that's a good indication there of some prime regions to watch. Uh, okay, let's go back here to the one day, all magnitudes. And Easter Island, we've seen that 5.6 coming in last night during the update since then we've seen another 4.7 a little bit further southeast of here along the uh, divergent boundary of fracture zone out here in the oceanic crust and also a 5.1 further south along the pacific and the antarctica plate boundary here uh, that earthquake activity on a fracture zone as well a uh, separation of the seafloor so overall overnight definitely a noticeable uptick out here within this region and that does tend uh, with the plate boundary map here um, does tend to put pressure over here along the Chile trench and also over here along this region of the subduction zones and it looks like uh, we have seen a little bit of uptick in activity overnight along the Kermadec trench a 5.1 and a 5.1 um, hours from each other but uh, in the same location and it looks as though this is kind of odd here. We got a got a, these are actually pretty shallow. Um, it's in the Kermadec Ridge. Uh, a lot of times we'll see some deeper movement quakes in here, but these are awfully shallow. But this is that zone that has not seen any major sufficient activity. Um, considering, remember all the sevens and all the sixes here up north. This is the area that needs to play catch up. It really hasn't happened. Uh, yesterday we did see, uh, well, I should say yesterday and the day before, we did see quite a few fives and fours um, off the coast of Japan, also down into the Mariana Trench uh, and areas throughout Papua New Guinea. But we haven't, we haven't really caught up here. This is like an area that we need to watch pretty closely there around New Zealand. And looking at, let me check out the map here, see what we got. Um, looks like there's been some threes in that area as well maybe some fours as as well but uh not listed up there on the map for the uh, usgs only showing these two so there's actually more activity taking place here in this region than what's being shown which makes sense uh let's see here 30 days 4.5 and above okay now bunch of sevens up here some deep, some shallow, with a lot of adjustment going on around the Tonga Trench. We've seen some further activity westward with that 7 over here around Solomon Islands. And a bunch of 6s and 5s further west. But specifically in this area of the Kermadec Trench, New Zealand area, it's been awfully quiet as far as any sufficient movement goes. Um, these quakes here, these 5s, it looks like these kicked up here over the last couple days. Uh, and they're all pretty moderately about the same magnitude. So this area right here could be a, uh, let me see how deep these are. Most of them are pretty darn shallow, really shallow. So we're not getting any subduction quakes here recently. Um, and that could be a sign that this area may be primed up here uh, for, for some farther, some much further larger activity along that area of the Kermadec Trench. Not a guarantee, but uh, this area definitely, um, you know, it's it's got to catch up eventually. And seeing that little swarm here over the last couple of days, last few days, that could be a good indicator of where it may be uh, starting to unzip or rupture, I should say. All right, um, let's see what else. Oklahoma. Or Oklahoma. <laughs> First, I put California out here. Now it's Oklahoma. Goodness. <laughs> 
Oklahoma's on my mind. It's a beautiful state. I love Oklahoma. The Big Island. What's going on out here? Most of the activity out around Pahala, southeastern flank. Nothing going on up at Mauna Loa currently. Looks like about uh, a little bitty earthquake earlier this morning. Looks like a 2.0, but far as the earthquake swarm goes there at Mauna Loa, at the summit area around the caldera is not active currently. Uh, at least not showing up here on the map. Most of the activity down around the southeastern flank. All right, let's see what else we have here. When was this earthquake? That was last night. We did see one further earthquake up here, 4.7, uh, 43 kilometers deep. Kurilkam Chaka Trench, the northern end. Um, let's see here, around the Java Trench area, looks like we did see another 4.5 earlier this morning, it looks like. And some further activity down south yesterday. Haven't really seen a major push here westward yet. Uh, we got one earthquake. There's that one in extreme western China. 4.9 coming in uh, just about almost an hour ago now. Uh, the rest of the areas here around Turkey, we did see that one coming in last night at 4.1. Nothing really showing up though across the rest of the area. Down in the South Sandwich Trench, a late earthquake from last night. Actually, this one coming in this morning, 4.9. Deep, though, uh, 80 kilometers here into the South Sandwich Trench. This is an area that's been showing quite a bit of activity. Here's the last 30 days of movement. Um, most of the activity has been situated here to the south uh, along the plate boundary here and also into the subduction zone. Quite a few fours and fives. Of course, this area did see an eight-pointer last year. Uh, but man, it's been pretty active up and down the region uh, last few days. All right, let's see what else we have here. Anything else coming in? Let's check out the uh, trimmer map from last night. It's not that big of a deal. Six epicenters up north. That's along the Cascadia subduction zone. Volcanic seismicity map. We're going to check out Mount Rainier. And then we're going to check out Mount St. Helens just to see what's going on. Uh, I do like to double check these and make sure there's no major earthquake swarm going on because sometimes we get left out. When it comes to notifying, I like to be the one that um, double checks this and verifies it. Uh, still seeing some earthquake activity out there, some very small microquakes. Some other movement being picked up across the region. I believe there's a pretty good storm system coming in. Um, and these events that look like blobs on the lines, they're not spiky. They're just kind of, you know, just an odd reading or indicative of some environmental noise. And that could be wind. Uh, I'm sure there's snow up there, quite a bit of snow, I'm sure. Uh, but these earthquakes, what we're looking for are some very small spiky lines or big spiky lines. Uh, depending on how big the magnitude is, but there's a couple of them. Uh, definitely over the last uh, few hours and last night. Uh, let's see what we got for Mount St. Helens here. I'm sure we'll see that wind event up there as well. Give it a second here and we'll see if we can pop this up. And no, this one, you really can't see those wind events. Hmm. But uh, either way, one earthquake, we see that, right? So we definitely know that's an earthquake. It's a well-defined one here within the last hour, it looks like. Not a big one, but it's probably up there in the one range. I don't believe the USGS has shown anything up there. Um, nothing going on up there at Mount St. Helens. And unfortunately... That's the station that's offline currently. It did pop back on last night for a little bit. It looks like it went down uh, here at Mount St. Helens. So I'm going to keep it up. Um, hopefully it will come back up. If not, I'll find a different uh, uh, seismograph station to monitor that activity. But uh, definitely looks like there's a little earthquake there around Mount St. Helens uh, most recently. All right, solar weather activity is refresh this make sure i got the latest page which i do we're looking at this baby coming at us 51 corona hole nice little you can definitely see that right dark hole in the sun well it's pouring out some high speed solar wind stream at us and it's a dead bullseye shot here pretty soon probably by tonight 
This thing should be well positioned center face center disc of the sun uh, and that will definitely be amplifying the conditions here uh, in the coming nights. Take a little while to get here. Uh, probably potentially around, um, I'm guessing maybe Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. Maybe Wednesday. We'll see how that plays out. Um, let's see what we got for some sunspots. Looking pretty bleak again. Looks like they got this up upgraded or updated. I think they do. Yes, I would say that's right. Um, yeah, so far as the sunspots go, not a whole lot of them and definitely not a whole lot of complex ones out here. Uh, we got this guy, this one right here kind of facing at us, but it's not, it's definitely not looking good for the uh, instability there. It looks pretty stable on the, on the magnetic field. That's uh, 3152. Things are pretty neutral, folks. No popcorn, no uh, amplification there of the X-ray uh, flux chart. Things below the sea level for a, a couple days now, and that's going to stay that way um, until we see some uh, some different sunspots or a um, you know a little bit more complex magnetic structure with them. But I don't think it's likely. 35%, very minimal chance for a sea flare. 5% uh, chance or less for an M flare. And of course, these down here are looking even worse at less than 1%. Uh, yeah, let's see what else we got here. Looks like there's still a little bit of um, instability here floating around with the KP index. That's going to be from probably some CMEs that uh, had been uh, Earth directed. And I think I had passed by now. It's kind of weird seeing this activity kick up out of the blue from nowhere. Uh, let's see what we got here. Solar activity during the past several days has been very quiet with the X-rays barely able to climb above the C-class threshold. Uh, Corona Hole 51, that's one we're just discussing, located towards the center of the sun, will become geo-effective early this week. Uh, a solar wind stream flowing from the zone could give, could contribute to active geomagnetic conditions. There, KP index of at least four. Uh, with a chance of minor G1 storming beginning November 30th. Okay, so here in a couple days. I think I was kind of right, around Tuesday or so. Um, so we'll see how that uh, plays out. But these current conditions that are coming in here, I don't know where they're coming from. Um, they're kind of... Uh, I, I thought at one point they were coming from maybe some CMEs that were uh, Earth-directed from some of the sea flares a few days past. But... Uh, we still got some conditions kind of just flowing in here. Maybe it's from 49. Uh, that has now since passed us, and we would be receiving um, some uh, charged particles and, and solar wind from that little coronal hole because uh, it was a little bit better in position here a couple days ago. So I'm pretty certain that's where it's coming from. Nothing major currently ongoing right now, just a uh, little bit of instability here with the KP index. Kind of keeping the conditions somewhat favorable for auroras at the higher latitudes. Looks like around Greenland, Iceland area. I'll have, uh, looks like at least a 50% chance. And uh, we'll wait for this forecast to change here from that uh, large coronal hole that's facing us early next week. But uh, for now, things are just kind of uh, minimal currently on the sun. All right, guys, we're jumping off here. Got a little bit of schoolwork to do. I don't know why they always make all the schoolwork due on Sunday. At least a lot of it is. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get busy on that, and then we will uh, be back a little bit later on this evening with a complete update, unless something major changes here. I'm going to drop these quakes a little bit off the globe. I don't know how they got turned up so high. Almost, almost looked like it was showing... Uh, 30 hours of activity. I believe that's a little bit more closer to 24 hour threshold right there. I don't like to clutter it. I like to keep it relevant there with the basically last 24 hours so we can see where all the activity is and see where uh, see where it's not. All right guys, have a good day. We'll catch you a little, little bit later on tonight. Peace out.